what is freedom? At times we ask this question more as a theoretical question. Uh, to know perhaps which author talks about which kind of freedom and perhaps which book talks about what kind of freedom. So we also have different kinds of freedom. We talk about different kinds of political freedom. Freedom for the state, freedom for a community, freedom for expressing ourselves. And uh, also, at times, the question about freedom from oneself. Freedom from oneself, that question is very much uh, a philosophical question. Can you be free from yourself? And if you are really free from yourself, can you even be, even be talking about such a freedom? Because uh, the idea is you cannot be free from oneself. The, the moment we say that we are free from oneself, then we are not even talking about freedom, but, uh, but something else. Because freedom is to be free from everything else and uh, for the person to be what he or she is. So these are certain common ideas about freedom. But what is interesting is that uh, often we think a lot about freedom. We worry a lot about freedom. We even uh, desire for freedom quite a bit, but mostly in a theoretical fashion. So a theoretical thinking about freedom is thinking about everything else and then placing freedom in the context of everything else and not oneself. Because to think about freedom is actually a daring question. It's not very easy to think about freedom. We can think about freedom of all different kinds, but one's own freedom that is a daring question. How can you be free from yourself? That's a very difficult question because you are making yourself very uncomfortable. You are making yourself very unsettled. But in spite of being a bit unsettled, can I still ask the question, what makes me free? Because it's an I question, it's a personal question. And the moment it becomes a I question, a personal question, it is no more a question, but it is an exploration. It's an experiential exploration. It is uh, going through your own experiences. It is reflecting back the mirror which you use to see others, to see yourself in the mirror and ask the question how free you are. So it's a very, very daring question. So that is something which I think we have to keep in mind because that question can unsettle you, it can disturb you, it can disturb you for many days. And, uh, but finally, perhaps if we can collect ourselves and not be swept off by the force of the waves of that unsettlement of that very question which cuts across our very cosy uh, ways of existing in the society, in our little world, uh, we can also perhaps realize that when we ask the question whether we are free, whether I am not free, or what freedom is, two very important experiences come along with the idea of freedom. And those two experiences are joy and contentment, which means uh, the moment we talk about freedom, we also have to reflect upon our sense of joy and contentment. What is the source of our joy and contentment? Is our joy and contentment coming from an external source, an external person, an external object? or perhaps an outcome, an ambition which is taking us towards the future, or an accomplishment which we had in the past, or perhaps just some excitement which is ongoing in the present. 
So is the source of our joy and commitment any of these time scales which are separated by the past, present and future, then it means those joy and contentment is also under continuous flux and they are very conditional and the true joy and contentment cannot be conditional because that is the very definition of being joyful or being contented that it cannot be conditional it cannot be conditioned it cannot be controlled it cannot be uh, incrementally given by a particular source it has to be perennial so the source of joy and contentment has to be perennial if it has to be perennial where can it come from can it come from anybody else outside can it uh, be borrowed from an external source well then that cuts across the very notion of being perennial, an eternal source. So the eternal source can only be the inner self, which can give us forever and ever. It continuously gives us and it is not being rationed or controlled by another person or another object or another out outcome, a result an expectation or a past victory because the moment the past, the present and the future dictates the degree of joy or the quality of contentment we have, we are bound. So that is where the experiences of freedom and contentment meet. If we have to be free, we have to be joyful and we have to experience contentment in a free manner. Which means nobody can control the joy and contentment we experience. The moment we know this, the moment we experience joy and contentment, which is unconditional, that itself is free. That liberates us. That liberates us not from another person, not from another object, but liberates us from ourselves. Because bondage is something which is very inner. Bondage is not created by an external source. Bondage is created by our own mindset, our own perceptions, our own expectations, our own desires, and which all of this are very limited because the world is limited. People are limited. And the more you depend on people, the more you depend on external sources, the less joy and contentment you experience. And if the joy and contentment we feel, we experience is less, to that degree we are bound. Essentially, to be free is to be joyful, to be contented, irrespective of what the past, present and future is. That's a tough question, isn't it? But then, that is the true meaning of contentment. Not to barter contentment for anything else. Such a contentment gives you immense creative joy, the ability to be excited by every moment, all the scenarios and sceneries which pass in front of our eyes, to keep our eyes wide open and to feel, oh my God, there is so much going on around. What a joy and what, what an excitement, how much to learn, how much to see, how much to enjoy, how much to lavish, relish. So if you are able to keep our mind wide open, our eyes wide open, our sensorium wide open and our mind open without judgments, but always welcoming and including more people, more objects, more scenarios, situations, challenges. If we have such an inclusive mind, then we have true freedom. Because freedom is also inclusion. Freedom is contentment, freedom is inclusion. So to be truly free, you have to have enjoyment coming from your inner self and not bound by anyone. And to be truly free is to be creatively enjoying whatever is in front of us. So unless we enjoy and unless we are contented, freedom is not experience. To be free is to see wide open to be inclusive. So freedom means to be inclusive, to be contented.
freedom, contentment and inclusion. This is a triad which cannot be broken. The moment one of the wheels or the legs of this triad is broken, then we are affected. Our being is affected, our existence is affected and we don't see the truth. To see the truth is to be contented, to be free and to be inclusive. So be free, be contented and include as much as possible. Thank you.